Okay, board members, we're going to continue on on our agenda. Next, we have public comments. Um, Ms. Rain is going to attempt to, these will be like two minutes. Um, comments, we have two that signed up. And I apologize if I mispronounce the name, but I believe it's um, the first up is Adosh Hodenshell. Is Jeff, do you see Josh on the public comment side? Anyone? Okay, uh, am I unmuted? Yes. yes. Great. Um, this is kind of a proposal of an idea. Uh, my name is Dr. Dash Howdeshell. Uh, I'm a science teacher here in Salt Lake City, and I'm a parent of children in the Utah public school system uh, at Bonneville Elementary. And since the schools closed on March 19th because of the COVID outbreak, um, I've been contemplating the value of new schools as response equipment to combat the pandemic under Utah law 53-2A-20 uh, as necessary to cope with a state emergency. Uh, we know that keeping class size small is critical to maintaining social distance and allowing to keep our schools open. We also know that we must reopen our schools in order to provide a safe place for our children so that our parents can go back to work. Um, if we put together, put the two together, we need more schools to cope with this emergency and safely reopen our economy. Um, then, over the last week, the protests and demonstrations over racial inequality mandated the governor to declare a second state of emergency, essentially placing us under double lockdown. Um, this unprecedented time is what has motivated me to come to you today, because I believe that if we try to push to build more schools right now in low-income neighborhoods and neighborhoods that are not dominated by minorities, um, we could actually work towards coping with both emergencies at the same time. Uh, this is their strong science to support that reducing class sizes reduces the spread of a viral pandemic. Um, we know that minorities are currently being hit hardest by the coronavirus outbreak. Um, and I know as a teacher that smaller class sizes results in better behavior, less violence, higher engagement by students, and better academic performance. And I believe this does not stop in the classroom, um, as we just heard from the previous recipient of her award. Um, but it percolates out into the community. Um, I believe that if we invest in our poorest, most racially diverse communities by building schools now, our government could demonstrate that Black Lives Matter and that we, the people of Utah, are willing to invest in our minority populations now. Um, I'm asking the state school board to make a request to, gov to the governor to build more schools under Utah Law 53-2A-20 because building new schools is much less expensive than shutting down our state economy, um, and it is much less expensive than enforcing extended curfews in our capitals. More schools can mitigate the COVID pandemic by creating more space, and more schools mitigate racial injustice by providing better education opportunities, which we all believe in. Um, these buildings, of course, would only be the first step because schools are only as good as their teachers and administrators, um, but we may be in a unique moment to overcome this immense first hurdle. Uh, I'm going to set my email in the comments. Uh, if anybody would like to follow up with me um, about this, I'd be happy to talk with them either now or offline. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for your time. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we'll have uh, Heidi Matthews, um, president of UEA. Hi Heidi, are you? Um, I think I am. Am I good? You are fantastic. Thank you. I mean, thank you all for your work in, in the really uncomfortable process of, of proposing the cuts for the 2, 5, 10%. We recognize uh, UEA that you were required to do this. And as UEA, we can completely empathize for being blamed for things that are outside of our control. Uh, so UEA has been really consistent in disputing the assumptions behind these discussions of cuts and been frustrated by the negative impacts that these discussions have had already, with many educators feeling uncertainty and angst over things like potential cuts to USTAR or MOST, the ag programs, the class size reduction funds, 
And, and we have been really consistent in saying that no cuts should be considered until the revenue projections are fully understood. And every option for backfilling any budget shortfalls have been, a, an ex, have been explored. And now more than ever, those of us who stand for public education, we stand for students, we stand for justice, we must stay unified to make sure that our schools have the resources that they need to address uh, the, these needs that have only increased in this um, 2020, which is kind of a mix of 1918 and 1968. We, see, we hear so often about given the circumstances that we all need to take a haircut. And I, I urge you as the Utah State Board of Education and all of us united for, for public education that we, we approach these cuts with a, a discriminating eye because some entities have really grown some pretty darn long hair in this period of prosperity. And, and can afford to have some of the, the ends trimmed. But I think you can agree that we in public education have been sporting a pretty darn short crew cut for quite some time here. And this crew cut was just starting to grow and we can't afford to be bald. Our kids are counting on us to be unified, especially in these next few weeks as the Utah budget is adopted. So again, thank you for all that you do. And thank you and, and this bald head appreciates it too. <laughs> Bald is beautiful in that respect, Mark. <laughs> All right, um, moving, moving right along. That concludes our public comment. Thank you.